Warning. The following was made with zero professionalism. Viewer discretion is not advised. Can you tell I'm bad at this? Um... Welcome to the first in what appears to be a mini-series on this channel, Bauer TV. Currently we have Maz, and we're talking about a little-known tabletop role-playing game by the name of Plot Armor. Maz, describe this game to me. Oh yeah, I also need to put my headphones on to ignore the echo. Give it, give me a sec. I am so oh. professional, I promise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello. Big ass book about how to make uh, post apocalyptic cars. You know, I'm going to consider you a kind of professional. At least we try. I mean, legally, <laughs> yes, actually, I'm a professional because somebody bought a copy, so yes, I am a professional about Red Earth now. Woo! Congratulations, my dude. Yeah. And this is why we have this yellow uh, dress shirt on to make me look even more professional because dress shirts are great because they double as real shirts. Mm, magnificent. And over shirts. Look, my wardrobe is like 70% denim. Like... Yeah, my, mine is 70% white clothing. 10% really? clothes with holes. Why white yeah. clothing? Shit's a bastard to keep clean. Because I go to a hospital, did it? Remember that part? Oh, yeah. I only have literally one denim pants and two shirts. Ah, uh, so you got the white dad fit. Yeah, I work too much. <laughs> I need a break. Despite being a 560 pound Mexican man, you have the white dad fit. Fuck you. <laughs> It's just so difficult to find this shit in my size because I am farther than anything else in this fucking planet. Or at least in the country. Fair enough. There was there was real pain in that fuck you too. Tabletop simulator, please open. I want to play I want to play tabletop simulator game. Look, no you do don't. Look okay. it okay. Fuck it, it doesn't actually matter no it doesn't it says it's trying okay. to run uh, well how about it doesn't, we'll look at me yeah it doesn't actually matter so i'm just not gonna record that part for now i'm gonna go for now i, oh, I sent there the it pdf is. to you i didn't send the pdf to you did i uh oh yeah i did uh, yes you did of course i did so oh, you can use it just to say because it is literally two pages long. Hmm. Okay, so yes, yeah, right, let's understand. let's talk about plot armor. Oh god damn, the it really didn't like me starting up that recording. No, it's because I'm okay. operating off of a Toshiba laptop from 2009. That the only thing it's had recently is a RAM upgrade because the hard the um what's the part the RAM's attached to? The motherboard. Thank you my brain not working the motherboard uh got corroded so that's why my laptop was being a piece of shit a while back so i had to get that uh i had to get the motherboard and everything removed and Do the only like one that? the only one that fit cost me like 150 bucks and also had like an extra eight gigs of ram also i went up to like eight gigs of ram <laughs> so i was like well we're just bolting a plasma cell to a rock. It's like, yes. So I found a place where I could get cassowary eggs. And I've been deviously... My tongue is too big for my mouth. Devishly. Devilishly. Thank you, that's the word. Devilishly. Deviously. God damn it. Deviously. How the fuck are you not speaking your own language? Because English is a bastard language made by twats. Uh, fair enough. Devil, devil, devilishly, devilish, devilishly yeah. attempted to buy cassowary eggs so I can rear one as a battle cassowary. God damn. I am sure that's not going to work. Well, if you rear it from a chick, it's probably fine. 
Oh, well, I I expect to find you in the Darwin Awards, I'm going to guess. Alright, so, let's quickly go over plot armor and give everybody the necessary details on why they would or would not like to join the game. I will grab purple, because purple is pretty. Uh, hmm. Let's talk about plot armor. The First of all, it's only two pages long, so it's, it's a system that doesn't require a lot of preparation, huh. except the rules, a guy, a C6, so it's not like you actually need to find massive amounts of dice, and so you can just steal like, the dice from Monopoly. Yeah, exactly, or Risk, or whatever the fuck game you have in your house. Maybe I need to reduce the use of the air word. So, the setting is very simple. The setting is very simple. You 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 make your own character. You can do it however you want, but it has specifically certain characteristics. First of all, of the the mecha is always called armor. You can't call it Gundam. You can't call it Arcade. You can't call it uh, Anita La Wolfanita. You can't call it Tequila Ranchi. None of the rest. It has to be called armor. Okay. Second, uh, second rule is that there has to be some conflict or some ability that requires mecha to exist. Which is nonsense, you are playing a game that is full of mechas, why wouldn't you have that idea already in your mind? I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody's grandmother gets you, get, like, maybe your grandmother buys you this for Christmas. They're like, I heard you like the tabletop games and I found this one. You like anime, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. Last time I heard about a guy receiving free anime, it was 57, uh, 57 boxes full of hentai, so... I mean, it's still based, and it's still anime, and it is still art, and I'm going to die on that hill. But... Uh, I know you're going to die on that hill because you're going to pass out from exhaustion halfway up. Uh, probably around the first video. I mean, imagine 57 boxes full of hentai. Can you imagine that? Jesus Lord, that, that's a lot of perversion, even for me. Your room's gonna look like a Bosch painting. <laughs> only on the left, only on the right arm. Remember that episode in <laughs> Family Gather where Quagmire discovers porn? Oh, yeah. God. Basically, that. You pull out a black light. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Okay, back to the rules. First of all, your mech is called armor. Oh. Second of all, there has to be some conflict. And the third rule, important for the setting, is that whatever whatever situation you put armor, you always succeed. Until the end of the game. Alright. You always succeed. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter if you lost armor leg. It doesn't matter if... If you got nuked, if you got sold to the devil, if somebody ate your soul, whatever, you always succeed. Doesn't matter what happened. What? That guy has the devil. What? I don't know, man. Maybe someone in Gundam? I mean, Gundam is weird enough. Um, Gundam is about having pretty, little, uh, pretty gay people and a himbo fight over capitalism. That's, that's, that's what Gundam's about. And committing war crimes okay. in space. And making child oh, soldiers. So, oh, so normal crime. So normal war crimes. Yeah, but in space. Wait, are there a law in the space about war crimes now that I think of it? I don't think there are any. There is yet to be a murder in space. I mean, I mean, Elon Musk sent a car into space. I don't know if that's legal. It's incredibly stupid, but it's illegal. It's not illegal. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Here, don't include this joke. But, God, that's uh, almost uh, impossible to read. <laughs> Even with the alt key. Uh, it's not my fault. Yeah. Okay, it is my fault. I blame you wholly and entirely, and I am free of blame. <laughs> <laughs> that's usual. <laughs> okay, so that's the rules of the setting. 
Yeah. You're basically this place, you have a mecha, it's called armor, and it, you're going to have incredibly difficult situations that you're going to succeed. Doesn't matter what happens. All right. So mechanically, how does that work? Uh, we're going to check it. Secondly, you have your protagonist that can be whatever the fuck you want. Yep. That, that's literally it. You can be a human, you can be the hero, you can be the child prodigy, you can be the evil villain, you can be whatever you want. In general. Hmm. And the third part, you are basically making your own anime series about Nameka. Alright. And this is, this is a... almost like a group writing game more than a traditional RPG, yes? Yeah, uh, basically, yeah. It is called a one-player RPG, because calling ah. it work, writing by yourself would be incredibly sad. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's exactly what I think about this. <laughs> Which calling is very it, sad, because I have... Calling it writing by yourself would be extremely sad is, uh... Ouch! <laughs> Not wrong, yeah. ouch! Well, geez, dude. Uh, do you know why I don't write? I wrote my memoirs, and I am sad sometimes when I read them, because uh, believe it or not, writing has some power to to make your thoughts plastic on paper and make me forget them. Mm. Especially in a job like mine, where you have to forget so so much shit. Yeah. Okay. So how do you play? First of all, you start on episode one. Yeah. Like any anime, except Naruto, I think it started like in episode 3, something like that. But, but it's, it's Naruto, the one like that. So anyway, you start on episode 1, <laughs> you have to... <laughs> yeah, but they don't count, they like Naruto, no. So, primarily, it's a solo play RPG that is based around effectively creating a very specific type of anime genre story that goes for however many sessions. You said 32 before, right? 32 episodes, but yeah. it, it's not like like sessions. It's uh, just episodes all, for writing, right? It's, it's story episodes for Yeah, basically. So, you start at episode 1, obviously. You have to design your title, you have to design your space date or whatever the fuck you want to make it. So, in the first episode, Rule 1, you have to describe your character, obviously, mm. uh, what he expects. So you're basically giving the, the shortcomings, your allies, your enemies, your conflicts, uh, where did you enlisted, how did you feel, Stop and like of that. course, important part, your relationship with armor. So you have to describe how you got armor, why you have armor, uh, how is armor, uh, how it works, what buttons you have, whatever the whatever you want. So you basically establish your your setting by yourself. All right. So episode yeah, episode one is going through and making sure you have the the pilot basically. Who are you? Yeah, who's your main character? Who's your supporting cast? How did your main character interact with the world at large? How did your main character interact with the biggest setting point, which is, in this case, the mecha? Stuff like that. Yeah, and, and a little a little how your world works. So this is something interesting. So you're basically writing a novel. Alright. So, so that's episode one. After you, after you cover every data, and you consider that you have written enough about episode one of your novel, basically your introduction, you mm. roll a d6. This big ass guy we have here. So in this, this case, it rolled a three. Yeah. So you advanced three episodes, right? Alright. So we are no longer in episode one. Now we are in episode four. Right, okay, so you randomly... So you're in episode 4, you roll the die again. And first of all, we obtain the 6. So this is what is going to happen to our protagonist. So our protagonist is going to come back from the dead. Alright. In this case. And what's going to happen with the armor? And the 3. So we are going to come back from the dead. Mm -hmm. And in episode 4, 
the armor is going to take control of itself. Interesting. All right, so you've got to write in these plot points. Exactly. So in episode That's four. So in episode four, we are going to consider our character. We are going to ignore what has happened on the other three episodes. We are going to kind of summarize what could have happened on those three episodes, what we were looking at. Yeah, in the we other previous episode section, basically. Basically. And then, in the past, you're going, you're going, it's important to say it in past. You are going to say, you know what, uh, he died this way, but when he was about to die, the armor took the possession of the, of the character. It, it, uh, I don't know, it stored its, uh, the soul of my character, the protagonist inside of it. So the body more or less died, but it got cloned for <clears throat> saying something. Just for saying it's something to make this faster. So you are back from the dead by resurrection via cloning, and the armor is basically alive. So we roll again after we brought this we're that and we rolled that one so from episode four we go to episode five what happened after we resurrected or yeah. that clone exactly and so on so on so on until whenever you want during the episodes let's see episode five we find uh, the girl he likes or the boy because everyone is gay these days or the boy he likes, and they ha they share the moment of complacency, etc., etc. But let's see what he has to do this episode. He has to die and resurrect again. God damn! At this time, the armor temporarily transformed to resurrect you. So. Well, he was speaking in episode five. Well, he was speaking by the love of his life. He got murdered, murdered by a guy that wanted to steal armor. Again, so armor transformed into super armor. Just to say quickly, it got it got equipped with with his lover, which means something. Uh, shoot the bad guy, stole the soul of the bad guy, and resurrected the protagonist using the power of the soul of the bad guy. For example. Okay. So yeah, this 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 story we have created a Frankenstein esque pilot who keeps coming back to life every time they're killed. We Maybe. made the Dark Souls of Mecha anime. <laughs> okay, so let's see how many episodes. Please be unknown. Yeah, we get to episode two. Five, four episodes happened. We don't know what happened. You can say it. He went to the beach, or he started to have. Let's say that he started having conundrums. Yeah. Obviously, you're supposed to be writing all of this. Yeah. He started having conundrums with, you know what, I resurrected twice, like in one day. God damn. It's, it seems uh, after the last time I got resurrected, the erectile dysfunction stayed. Blah, blah, blah. And let's see what happens to us this time. Please don't die again. <laughs> Please don't die again. <laughs> so, this time. We went berserk and killed a lot of people, friend and foes alike. So okay. this is going to be the good episode. So let's see what happened to the armor. And the armor temporarily transformed again. Hmm. So in episode two, we go on a mission to find the planet of the guy that tried to get to that tried to kill us. Well, succeeded killing us, but we resurrected using his soul. Hmm. And we obtain from the soul the information of where the planet is, what the plants are, etc. etc. So we went to that planet, and it was so so full of mechas that are bigger, better armed. <clears throat> so it transformed again into super armor uh, in a moment of desperation when he was surrounded by like literally everyone. Uh, super armor started killed everyone, uh, taking souls from it and powering itself from the souls of the enemies and friends alike. And your mentor died in that battle, killed by yourself during that desperation moment. All right, we finally have our motivation. Motivation to keep killing people. <sighs> so you survived. Let's go to the next episode. Obviously, you're supposed to be writing this to make it more complex. Yeah, so uh, that you can tie your plot, 
plot beats together and stuff. It's so, a it's a really advanced version of write a short story. <laughs> basically, yeah. So next is episode twelve in this case. Uh, so it's it's a short one. We can consider an episode eleven was the the funeral one about the mentor that got killed. Mm. And let's see what what happened to us on episode twelve. We died. Just, uh, uh, we died. No. We died. transformed into a powerful form. That's incredibly interesting. So, we, so we've made Frankenstein DBZ, the mecha anime. <laughs> and the armor summoned a new weapon. Okay. So, on episode 12... Frankenstein DBZ, the mecha chronicles. The Revengeance. Rising. The revengeance. Electric Bungalow oh, 2. Super Feud. The Vengeance. The girl legged. <laughs> Ultimate reloaded. <laughs> the final cut. The 2059. So in episode 12, uh, we, uh, we say our master was killed. We are sad about it, but we, f we uh, start feeling that it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. Because of course it isn't. So we go back to the planet, there is another rival there, that is the son of the guy that killed us in the first place, but we didn't die. Uh, so we transform into some kind of Goku phase 2, we beat the shit of him, we actually use the soul of his father to, to torture him mentally, we only break him mentally. Hmm. And and we do that using the new ability that we don't know the armor had, that is to make a weapon that allows us to manipulate souls and minds alike. So we basically torture this guy mentally, which is not covered in the Geneva Convention, so it's fine, I guess. The Geneva Maybe? checklist. Exactly. So that's episode 12, we are cruel and we are an asshole. So we advance our episodes to episode 17. Fortunately something nice happened this time. To us, ah uh, no, of course not, we die again! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> that's correct. Uh, let's see how, let's see the armor, what it does. And the armor is going to take control over itself, again. Every time so, we die we get inside. <laughs> where our soul moves into the armor more and more. Basically, yes. So, on episode 17, uh, we die again during another uh, unfair combat because we are becoming cocky and our mind is breaking. And basically, everyone we love is dying <laughs> cruelly during this war. Mm. So, we take another attack on the planet. Uh, so, we take another attack at the planet. Mm. We got killed, but at the worst moment of the of the of the fight, uh, the armor took control of itself because it was a uh, one weekend where we weren't using the armor properly, because it was against the guy we broke mentally five episodes ago. Yep, yeah, that makes is, sense. That is now that is now some kind of super berserker without a mind attempt to kill. Basically Hodor, but evil. So Hodor. So, so fucking Hodor killed us. Uh, the armor took control of itself. Uh, stole us, put, it, put us inside of it, killed the bastard, and took the soul of Hodor, and resurrected us again. Because Damn. of course it is. So we're <laughs> in the of 18. Um, Man, this is exactly how I remember Evangelion going. It's something interesting happening with right? Jelly Joe. So, episode 18, uh, I hope with Ben's a lot. Let's see next episode. We die. Episode 24. We die again. Uh, please, no. Episode 24. Uh, something different. Blacked out in the middle of an unwinnable battle. Oh, God. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, especially because we have died thrice by now. <laughs> We're just suffering and, aftershocks for being resurrected. And the armor summoned a new weapon. Okay, so 
And well, a long bunch of things passes. We are again against the full force of the, of the planetary alliance that tried to kill us thrice by now. So it's the full float is dead. Everyone is basically escaping. Yeah. You are the last one using armor. And at some point during that fight, uh, you get knocked out. Because seeing so many people that that the souls of the guys that you have resurrected resurrected you twice break you mentally and you yeah. and you go down. Exactly, yeah. So I think I think we've got the general gist. Do we want to skip to the end now and explain how the last part works? Okay, so at this moment when you wake up at episode twenty four, I have decided that I finally understood what's going on. I have literally blood armor. Yeah. I can I can die. I can get killed. Everything about this is horrible. Basically, I became uh, the armor mo mo was a nuke at the piece of twenty four and killed everyone in an equivalent to the to the hollow explosion in Halo Three. Yeah. Let's just say like that. So now I understand that I can die. I am super cocky. I absorbed a lot of souls because of that. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. So, just when basically you reach... become fucking the uh, mag from uh, Mortal Kombat, but with mechas. With mechas, exactly. So, in episode 31, in episode 32, sorry, uh, finally you die. Yeah. Finally, the battle is over, you die, you disappear, you whatever explodes, you sacrifice yourself, whatever. So, I decided that let's roll for episode 32. So it's a 4. Uh, Meldeth with the armor. Hey. That can't be good. And armor does number 1, which is summon the new weapon. Mm. Okay. You are the new weapon. You become the spine cannon. <laughs> Basically. So in episode 31, it starts as usual, remember, you have written all this time in past, like you are saying your memor your memories. Mm. On episode 32, one part is in written in past, but the final moments are written in present. Right. So, in the last fight, you are fighting the mega president omni god of this galactic empire that has been attacking you with everything they have yeah, and but... you have basically raised everyone to the ground like we're a fighting... damn song Dracula we're, we're fighting Beth Jesus and we're winning we think <laughs> basically so at some point Jeff Bezos finally deactivates your resurrection by inserting a knife or some kind of mecha weapon inside your body that prevents you from finally resurrecting something religious whatever symbol you want to put he puts a dollar so, sign inside of your heart and suddenly you become catalyst <laughs> so at this moment uh, at this moment i feel this is my last duty so you Fused with armor, armor decides to take you and the power of all the souls you have got that during the very first episode. Where the soul can... cannon jizz blast. And you fuse with armor and you basically give the most powerful soul infused Kamehameha in history and nuke the ass of Jeff Bezos, his planet, and the whole Galactari universe. Yes. Before and you say you this. Dead. <laughs> and then you have to write your epilogue. What happened after that? So in the epilogue, uh, the planet is not completely destroyed. It's the world of life. It's a hellish desert. Whatever. <clears throat> but in the middle of the planet, there is a statue of something. Basically with the head suspended. And in front of it is Jeff Bezos. Completely, completely turned into gold things mm. and covered in piss and the galaxy is completely freed of the evil galactic empire that tried to kill everyone before 
And you all remember that the guy that killed the Galactic came fire. Yeah. The cat. All right, so that is how plot armor works. A very quick, very brief expl- explanation and go through of how the game works. Basically, that's, that's the gist of it. What kind of players would you suggest this game for? So, exactly. I suggest this for people that want to write, but feel that they are not very good at it. As just to start getting the the gist of the idea. That of helps course, sort of, uh, uh, boost confidence. Alright. Um, right. Any closing it, any closing thoughts on this thing? I recommend it. It's very niche, I understand. It's very niche, yeah, it's super that's, simple. To be fair, that's what Power TV is about, is a lot of niche RPGs and stuff. And I think this one, this one specifically do- doesn't really need a, a live play, mostly because one, it's really short, two, it just also needs an explanation of how the game works, like we did earlier. <laughs> well, it's not that it needs an explanation. I think uh, saying an example is the better way to yeah, exactly. say things. In conclusion, would you have a novelist friend that that wants a gist to write? And you, you don't want to make a too bad. Who doesn't have a group anymore? <laughs> yeah, that. Or you don't want to play Mechton anymore, or or Starfinder for a while, or, or you just love Gundam. You want to write Gundam, but you don't want to write more fan fiction about Cindy fucking everyone at the same time, including the the wolf that constantly harasses him. Uh, this is your system. We're going to like it. Uh, I know enough about Gundam to know that you saying Shinji set a shiver down my spine as Tenchi went, That's not Gundam! <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't care. Do you care? I don't care. Anyway. Uh, so with that, I, I think we're going to call it here today. Uh, yeah, but... Spread love, be kind, Thank you. punch a fascist. All that jazz, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.